Hi everyone and welcome to the Captain Platform channel. My name is Anastasia and today I will show you how to put in place this kind of torque light mode switcher in PowerBI. We often see this kind of behavior in apps, websites and even on our phones. So I thought it could be interesting to do it in PowerBI. Curious to know how to do it? Keep watching. So here we are in PowerBI desktop. We have our report, our elements and our toggle button. So if I just click on it, we see that the colors are changing. So let's do a step-by-step -step tutorial allowing us to build this. I created a new page to have something proper. I'll just add a KPI on that. Let's just pick a card visual. So the first question could be, how can we dynamically change the color of a text or a background of this visual? We will use something that you may already notice or even used, which is a conditional formatting. So if we select this visual, go to the formatting pane, the general and the effects part, we have a background. So here we can choose between the available colors, we can um, pick a personalized color, so everything works properly. And we see here that we also have a conditional formatting option, which will allow us actually to make something dynamic. We will get back to this part a bit later. The second question uh, could be, how can we actually tell Power BI that we need uh, the dark or light theme? So for that, we will use a slicer. And in terms of colors, I thought of creating a themes table actually where we can store uh, the different information used uh, to customize our Power BI report. So here I already have uh, this table, so I will create just another one uh, for demo purpose. I will use the enter data option in Power BI, so we have everything in Power BI. So I'm calling it Power BI uh, theme, just, to, um, just for it to be different from the other uh, table. So um, let's say we have a name we have the color and we have a category. Why am I creating also a category? Because depending on the elements that you, ha you have in your report, you may need, for example, in a dark mode to have dark visuals, but white color in a text in order to differentiate it. So I think it's interesting, you know, to have um, some detailed information um, for the different visuals that you have in your report. So I call it uh, dark, and light, light, uh, the color, so the category would be um, visual background. So we have these two. And for colors, um, I have some colors here, so I'm using the hex codes. For when we are in the light mode, our visual background will be white. And when we are in dark mode, I just picked a color uh, from my theme and the same let's do it for the text so the text one so the text would be the opposite because when we have a dark mode you have white text so I'm just copy pasting this and just switching them uh, in place so we have this table that will allow us to find the right color for the category and uh, a theme name so let's just load everything. So everything's in place. Uh, we have a Power BI theme. So if I just um, add the slicer, maybe name. So we have dark and light. We have the two themes. When I select, nothing happens because <laughs> we did not yet uh, implement the dynamic color changing, but it's a good beginning. So then how can we actually take the white color when selecting uh, the dark or the light mode? We'll create a measure that will help us identify the X code uh, of the color to be implemented. So I'm creating a measure. Let's say it's my selected, it's my color uh, for text text and let's just um, make a simple calculate selected value 
of our color uh, polyethylene in color where category is text so like that and then if I add it to my page let's just pick a card so when I'm in light mode I will have a dark text and when I'm in dark mode I will have a light text so in order to prove you that uh, things are working properly we'll try to put that in place for this visual so here we created um, a measure for our text so we'll try to color this text depending on what uh, we choose here in um, the theme part so I'll just go for this one is a text so I'll just go to visual color so by default it's black I'll go to the field value and I will just choose my measure my newly created measure as you see the text disappears actually it's just white uh, so when we go to light mode we will have a darker uh, text and when we go to the dark mode normally we will have a light text just uh, I'll just add a small background in order to show you that that's uh, actually working so we'll do the same for the background in order to have also a dynamic background so I'll just copy and paste my measure uh, to do it quickly and I will create color for visual background calculate and I'm just replacing visual background we have that and I will just go here we are already here for I will choose a field value the Poly theme and the color for visual background and here we are when I go to light we have a light background with some dark text and we, when I go to dark we have a dark background with some um, white text so here we are we have something dynamic which allows us to switch between um, the two modes so that's working well but we will go a step further and implement a toggle button that will allow us to switch between these two modes so what we will do actually uh, we will create two buttons so let me just create a button here and um, I will you can as well put just a text here I will add a cool pretty cool image so if you want to, uh, to put an image on a button you can go to the style the icon part the icon type custom and then you can browse uh, for your image so here we are with uh, our two buttons the dark and the light one the light mode one so how can we implement the dynamic change by clicking on the button I think you already have the answer so it's by using the bookmarks this will allow us when clicking on the button define an action which will call a bookmark and within this bookmark we define that we change uh, the dark and light modes so let's just do it so I have my two buttons I need also the bookmarks part and the selection part so actually the, um, the slicer we will use it but it will be hidden why because uh, we don't need <laughs> it on this page we want to use instead of it the buttons but we will still use it so I have here my two bookmarks that I already created for um, uh, for the sales analysis part. Uh, for this case, I just rename my buttons because button and button uh, can be a bit confusing. So I just uh, call it button uh, light, button dark. And I think we, when, when you have a lot of elements, it's a good idea to rename things. Otherwise, you'll have a lot of, you know, card. Let's just call it card uh, color and card uh, customers. And we have a slicer. So what we will do is uh, actually to put uh, two buttons in the same place. 
Uh, I'll just remove the background because our white blue has some white things. So we can do it like that. So when you click on this button, is the other button that will show up and the, the opposite. So when we are in the light mode, we want this button to be shown and uh, the data will be updated based, uh, the colors will be updated based on this selection. So what we want to do is actually hide by default this visual, hide the dark button, and with all of that, we will create actually a bookmark. So let's call it dark, no, it's a light, sorry, light mode. Um, what is important is to keep the data option because this will allow us um, to, to keep, you know, the selection, the dark or the light modes. And also we'll just select uh, the option selected visuals uh, because this will allow us, you know, to only apply these changes to the selected visuals and not, not to all the visuals. So this is why we actually select the desired elements and I will just update the bookmark. We have to do the same for our dark mode. So we will just show the slicer, choose the dark mode, hide the slicer, hide, uh, show actually the dark and hide the light. So we reselect everything and we add another bookmark called dark mode. The same, we have selected visuals and we update the bookmark. And then if we do a test, so if I click on the light mode, we see that light mode is there and on the dark mode, everything works perfectly. So here we are with the two bookmarks. So the final step would be only to say that when we click on this button, we have an action, which will be bookmarks and uh, which will uh, bring me to the light mode. So when I click, we have a light mode and the same for the light button. We have an action, the bookmark and the dark mode. And like that, when I click, things happen. <laughs> so this is just a small example um, of everything that we have here. So we have you have to apply um, the formatting, conditional formatting options to the visuals that you want to change. Uh, what you can do is um, if you don't want to, you know, each time to click on that to go to the formatting, you can use the format painter uh, that will allow you to apply the same formatting options to different visuals. You have to create the different uh, bookmarks. Just to keep in mind, Unfortunately, this option is not available for all the visuals and all the elements. For example, uh, if I just click on that, you see that we also have a background changing the color of the, the page background. And actually, this is not um, a default option uh, because if I go to uh, the formatting of the page and I go to canvas background, we don't have this conditional formatting. Actually, you can only choose a color. So what I did is I created a rectangle that is behind all my elements and I'm working on the uh, options of um, uh, filling options of this visual. So this is how it works. One important point could be, please don't forget an option when putting that in place because if I can just show you what happens when you don't do it, when you have a rectangle actually in, uh, on a page, it may come that your users click on this rectangle by thinking uh, that this is, you know, a blank, um, blank space. So I will just uh, remove this option. Let me just, uh, demo it to you so I will just go here and remove it. So let's imagine you didn't think about it and your user clicks and everything is changing. <laughs> your user is afraid <laughs> why this doesn't work. So it is important not to forget that you have 
to maintain the layer order otherwise when you just click on this uh, everything will change so if i go back to uh, the formatting option the general and the advanced option of my rectangle i have something that's called maintain layer order i click on that put the save and then when i click somewhere that doesn't change so this is very very important so here we are at the end of this tutorial I hope it was interesting, I hope it was useful for you and your future projects. Don't hesitate if you have questions, suggestions, to put all that in the comments. See you in my next video.